Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Though in the form of God, Christ Jesus did not cling to equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who pours out your Spirit upon your sons and daughters, Grant that we, following the example of your servant, Florence Lee Tim Hoy, chosen priest in your church, may, with faithfulness, patience, and tenacity, proclaim your holy gospel to all the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gensereth, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowd from the boat. 
When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out the, into the deep waters and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I'll let down the nets. Then they had done this. They caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And also, so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were parent, whose parents were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, for now on you will be catchers of people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. When we think about vocation, we tend to separate it from other parts of our life. There is my life, God's love for me, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then God comes along and plops this vocation down on top of it. But today's text doesn't do that and indeed shows us that vocation is a part of God's care for us. In the story of Florence Lee Tim Hoy, there is God's care for the people on Macau who could not get a priest past Japanese lines in order to celebrate communion. And the bishop responded, as bishops can do, by giving permission to Florence to preside at communion. And then later, when she was able to get across lines, or he was able, I forget exactly how it works, but they were able to get together finally, the bishop ordained her a priest because she was filling that role already. It was meeting a need of the people. Unbeknownst to her, it was also meeting a need for her later in the Cultural Revolution when she had to work on a work farm and a factory and undergo political re-education because she was a counter-revolutionary, the fact that she had been ordained a priest was what she needed to hold on to and get her through that time. So that the priesthood wasn't just a job for her, it wasn't an addition to God's care for her or God's care for other people, but it was all integrated. It was all integrated. In the Gospel, Matthew and Mark, when Jesus calls his disciples, he says, follow me, and they follow him. And Luke is the only Gospel that gives us more context. To this story. So Luke makes a story out of this calling. And they're, they've been fishing at night, which is common in that area. And um, they've been unsuccessful. And Jesus uh, borrows a boat, does some teaching, tells them to cast their net 
significantly into the deep. My first thought is, okay, I know growing up in Florida and swimming a lot, there are places where you walk out on the shore and then there's like a drop off and it gets deeper. So it's easy for me to imagine their boat being right over the, as it were, underwater cliff. So one side is shallow, one side is the deep. More significantly than actually what we can imagine is the hint, the suggestion, the implication that there are resources available to them that they don't know about. There are things they don't know, things they can't see. And part of a vocation, a call, whether it's a call to be an ordained leader or a call to be a lay leader or one of the most beautiful vocations I ever saw in my life as a priest was a woman in a parish that I served who had a calling to care for children. She was like a um, mother goose. I mean, anywhere she walked around in the church, there were a gazillion children around her. It was so funny, and I looked at that, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a call, right? There's a vocation. She was so good at teaching and encouraging the children, and, and, you, and you, you could just see it happening, right? I'm sure that when God gave her that call, she couldn't imagine how it would work. Just like all of us, in a sense of call from God to do something new, to lead, to um, take charge, or to serve in a certain way. We can't always imagine how it works, but there are unseen depths that God can see that we can And so there is a fullness of life and a part of the care for the person's life that is involved in that sense of vocation. A vocation isn't just a work order that God slaps on us. <laughs> right? It's not. It's actually a part of God's care for us and the fullness of our life. And so it is the fullness of the nets that foreshadows the fullness of the idea that now you'll fish for people. It's a beautiful text. It gives context to that call. And in so doing so, it opens up some realities of vocation and call. And the recognition that our vocation isn't just work, but it's also care for us. That God knows the contexts and the work and the challenges and the resources that are best for us, that we might not be able to see at the moment. That's how Florence Lee Tim Oy's life worked out. And in some ways, it's really sad because after the war, after the bishop ordained her, after the war, the rest of the bishops in the Anglican Communion had a major cow about the fact that a woman was ordained a priest. And people didn't, until, you know, very recently, people didn't realize that the first woman priest was from all the way back in 1944, right? And, and it's too bad because the bishops weren't seeing the full implication, depth, and truth of what God is doing with vocation. 
Frederick Buechner, as Sarah quoted in her sermon on Sunday, got it right. The spot where our greatest joys meet the world's deepest needs. Those are the kinds of connections that God makes. Connections that we may not see in the moment with a depth of resources of which we may not be aware. But it is a significant benefit and of significant importance for us to remember that we all have a vocation and that that vocation is part of God's care for us. join in prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. <clears throat> that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ, your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was giving up to death, Knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and precious death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for his coming, the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of Florence, Blessed Mary the God-bearer, the apostles and prophets, and all our brothers and sisters living and departed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Amen. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take and remember that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, and may your lives be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.